Hi guys, good morning. Thanks again for tuning in to my video. This is unscripted and I don't expect this video to take that long to record. But I just wanted to share my thoughts on soldering stations, soldering stations, I say soldering stations, don't know how you say it. But anyway, I've been in to hobby electronics for maybe four or five years now. And I figured I should probably get a proper soldering station. So I spent an evening looking and comparing the different stations that are available. This one here is a pretty tried and tested station. It has a lot of great reviews. Nobody really says anything bad about it. And it's kind of closer to the top end of soldering stations. Now I could go into measuring and comparing all the features, but that's going to get away from the point that I really like to make. I'll try to get to that later. Uh, this particular station, soldering station, is 50 watts. It has an adjustable temperature. And I think, well, there's a newer technology for these tips. I think this is still the old style technology. And the newer style has a tendency to con concentrate the heat in the tip, whereas the older style tends to heat up the whole shaft. There was a video by Lewis Rossman where he was discussing the cheap Chinese knockoffs versions of some of the popular soldering stations. But anyway, I forget which one this is, but um, I would like to focus on the fact that if you want to buy this one, it's $246. So it's pretty expensive. Another station I was considering is the Hakko digital soldering station. It's also very popular. And this one is 70 watts. There must have been another page for this because I know this one is a very heavily reviewed soldering station. For some reason this particular page is only three customer views, but this one is almost like the um, the Weller. It's a really popular one, and if you know about soldering stations, I don't even need to tell, tell you that. You might be a, more of an expert at soldering stations than I am. But here's the point I really would like to get at. These are too expensive. They cost too much. Oh, I know they're probably a better built device. There could be components inside them that are higher quality. Could be built better. It certainly looks like a higher quality device. But $250 before tax and before shipping. This is probably closer to $300 after you purchase it. And so I'm left wondering, what makes this soldering station so much better than what I'm currently using? which is this, which is a 25 watt soldering iron. Right? And I will leave that open for the comment section. If you have an opinion on why this is so much better than uh, a cheapie, then I would really like to know. Because I, I, I don't doubt that this is probably a better product, but is it like six times the price better? Is it really that much better? This is what I've been using for the last five years. When the tips wear out, and they have, I go to the store and I pay $9.99 and I get two brand new tips. And they last a pretty good amount of time. This is never broken. It's lasted. If it does break, I'll probably spend $25 and buy a new one. I don't doubt that this probably heats up pretty close to instantaneously, and even the Hacko one, which is
even this Hacko one, which is a little bit cheaper, is actually a little bit more wattage at 70 watts. I'm sure this heats up really quickly. But truthfully, I'm not in a career where I'm soldering circuit boards all day long. That actually doesn't sound very healthy. I have actually worked in electronics manufacturing, but I didn't work in soldering. And certainly for a career, for on-the-job work, you would probably have to invest in something like this, if not something even more expensive. I know there's even more expensive stations out there. But for me, I, I've never really had significant problems waiting for my iron to heat up. And if I had to, I could wait 10 or 15 seconds, and it's probably hot again. This one I'm talking about. So this instantaneous heat that maybe a 70-watt soldering iron provides, it just doesn't really seem to be that important to me. Not for the price. I'll try to re-sum up what I'm trying to say. I've been into hobby electronics for five years, and I figured it's time that I paid for better equipment. So I started looking into the equipment. And then I kept asking myself, why is this a superior product? Why do I need to own one of these for nearly four or five, six times the price of what I'm currently using? And there's also an argument to be made that my 25 watt soldering iron, which is probably on the cooler side, is probably safer when working on integrated circuits or CMOS transistors, which really are susceptible to, well, they're susceptible to static, electrostatic discharge, but they're also susceptible to high heat. Well, my low power soldering iron is probably protecting my circuits a lot better than the 70 watt Hacko with the temperature setting set high. So somebody tell me why my 25 watt soldering iron is far inferior. And uh, don't spare my feelings. I'm looking for a good argument. I'm looking for a good fight. So go ahead and, and write nasty comments. Well, not nasty, but say whatever you like. I don't delete my uh, comments. Okay, thanks. Have a good day.